All right, mood boosters. Let's talk about them. So in case you can't tell by my outfit, it is very cold and wintry here in Utah. It's 22 degrees right now. There's snow everywhere and the days are short and the nights are long. There's a lot of darkness. We're not in sunlight as much. We're probably not socially interacting quite as much. Um, there's increased stressors from the holidays. People, there's all kinds of stuff, right? There's like I'd say there's um, a bigger need to proactively do things in your life to boost your mood in the winter. And so I want to talk about some of those. Yes, I'm back. If you guys were here before, tumbleweeds. Yeah, you got to watch out for the tumbleweeds <laughs> here in Utah. They're crazy. If you guys didn't see that video, you got to see it. It's so nuts. But um, mood boosters. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things I want to talk about. We'll talk about some physiological stuff and we'll talk about some mental, emotional stuff. And the first thing I actually want to talk about is our thoughts that we land on. This is what I was trying to talk about before. So emotions are super, super healthy. And it's so good if something's coming up and it's making you sad or it's making you angry, it's making you want to cry, let it freaking work through you. Do not suppress that crap. We have enough evidence, research backed evidence on the suppression of emotions and how toxic that is for our body, right? Anger, lower back, suppression of rage and anger, um, fear, extreme fear gets trapped in our hips, right? It's, it's true. Look into it. Just Google it. You'll find all sorts of stuff from like psych psychologists to, um, experts in the body. So let the emotions go through you, but be mindful of the thoughts that you choose to land on. And an example, I love like analogies. I'm a big time analogy person. And so I like to look at us all as big kids that grew up, right? And if you, if you have a kid or you have kids or you've been around kids and they're getting really emotional about something and they're crying and they're in victim mode or whatever, they're just super upset. Have you noticed that if you say like just the, just the right thing, it just snaps them out of it like crazy. So we're the the same. So like what thoughts are we going to choose to land on when it, at the end of that processing emotion is so huge, right? Dr. Amen says a lot, like just, you don't have to believe every, he's like amazing. If you guys don't follow Doc Amen, you should, um, researcher on the brain and human psychology and all of these things. But he's like, just because you had that thought doesn't mean you have to believe it. doesn't mean you have to stick with that one. So choose which, how am I going to look at this situation in a way that brings me peace? All right, so with the thoughts and stories that we choose, like right now I could be like, I freaking hate Utah. It's 22 degrees and snowing. I can be like, gosh, look how beautiful this is. Totally, it's same scenario, totally different mental state that I am in depending on the story that I choose to believe about it, right? Okay, the next one is sleep. I, I mean, circadian rhythm is so, so huge. So if you're not in a usual flow, and I'd say what most messes most people up is a horrible, destructive nighttime routine. If you're staying up late watching movies until 11 30, 12 o'clock at night, and then getting sleep deprived or your sleep schedule's all over because your nighttime routine sucks, dive into that. Take it by the freaking horns and be like, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna get to bed earlier. I had to do a huge mindset change around what time I thought like it's go to bedtime. It used to be like, Oh, it's 10. Now I'll start going to bed. Now I'm like, it's eight time to shut everything down and start getting into that bedtime flow from workout performance to mood, to metabolism, to immune system, to everything. Sleep is fundamental. So if your mood has been crappy and you're not getting enough sleep, that is so like some people have better sleep, sleep quality naturally than others. But what can pretty much guarantee that you get what you need is a longer duration. So make a, make a push for sleep right now, especially. All right. Another physiological thing is, um, uh, making sure that you have the micronutrients that you need. <laughs> so, um, I want to talk about methylation just a little bit. If you guys aren't familiar with like methylation cycle of, through your body, um, basically this is what makes your immune system, your whole body it depends on methylation in order to operate correctly. So from neurotransmitters to hormones, to immune system, to metabolism, all of it. And you have certain they're called cofactors. You have the, all these vitamins and minerals that make all of that chain reaction work. And so if you're low on some, the chain reaction can't work correctly and you get low mood, you get poor immune system, poor metabolism, low energy, all of that. And some of the biggest hitters, like a pretty easy slam dunk for a lot of people is making sure that you have your B vitamins in place. So if you've had a low mood lately, I would just simply try a B complex and see how it impacts you. 
some of us don't extract B vitamins very well out of our food. Sp specifically, folate is a big one, and folate is so big for mood and energy. So you take B vitamins and they're active, they're methylated for you already, they're ready to go. So if you're having low mood, you might wanna try taking a B complex and see how that impacts you. Um, okay, exercise, guaranteed slam dunk mood booster. So if that's not part of your daily routine, for me, it's part of my daily routine, seven days a week, there's some sort of movement going on. You know why? Because the rest of the 22 hours I'm sitting on my ass <laughs> so I can move something for an hour to maybe hour and a half every day. Doesn't mean my intensity level is going to be balls to the wall every day, but I'm going to move something, right? So whether, even though I'm just walking uphill on a treadmill, if it's cold like this, something, move. It boosts your norepinephrine, your um, adrenaline, your dopamine, all of these neurochemicals that cause you to feel happy, driven, on top of life. Don't miss out on that opportunity. It's the most amazing natural mood booster ever. Okay. Next one is cold showers. I posted about this today in my morning routine and a few people were like, you had me until the cold shower thing. Okay. Just, a, just real quick. I, I don't take my whole shower cold. I'm not psycho. I take a regular shower and at the end of it, I turn it full blast cold. And here in Utah where the ground is frozen, that's real cold. So, and I stay in there probably, I don't know, 30 to 60 seconds. And the goal is to like breathe through it. So, instead of like oh, oh, this panic stress response, I've learned now to just breathe through it. And when we invite stress, like freak, freaking freezing cold water coming at you on your neck and your armpits and the top of your head and all of that, and you learn how to breathe through that, it impacts how you respond to stress overall. If you have not tried this consistently, I'm challenging you right now to try it for 30 days in a row. I always tell my clients, don't think, just do, don't think about it, just nope, cold shower, here we go, all right. And for me, the goal is stay in it until I'm good and I don't want to get out of it anymore. Learn to master your stress response. And that brings us to the next thing, which is breath. So um, one of my clients turned me on to an app called Lixir, L-I-X-I-R. It's only on Apple, but there's lots of um, breath work apps that you can do. And really simple, if you don't have an app, I like the app because it kind of like keeps me, I don't know, it's just this symbol of like, I do this now. There's so many guided breath work apps. So there's like a million you could do, but on a really simple level, it's just And then you can just try box breathing, all sorts of things. And you hold your exhale for like basically as long as you can hold on the exhale and then hold on the inhale as long as you can. I do a four minute flow at the beginning of my meditation on Lixir and then I meditate for six minutes. Why is meditation a mood booster? Now we're transitioning to that one because we have so much incoming all the time, so much. And it's five to 10 minutes. I like 10 minutes of meditation. I'm counting my breath work as part of it, but it's, you know, 10 minutes of, of releasing thoughts, learning how to like, whoop, there came that thing about how I need to go mail that thing. Nope. Goodbye. <laughs> and you learn how to let go of thoughts. So you can come back to center and stay in peace more often. And it literally feels like you have hours added to your day after you get into the space because you're not so impulsive and you're not like fixating on thoughts and just like letting them run through your mind all day. It's like, nope. Whew. Okay. So meditation, huge. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Feel th free to throw any of these guys, any, any ideas for mood boosters. And if you have them, um, obviously coffee is a mood booster, right? But if you do too much coffee all the time, you eventually actually get a decrease in mood because your body's dependent on that adrenaline dopamine rush and your own natural production goes down. So love it in the morning. You know, if you're doing it all day though, you can start to get negative returns. What else? Mood boosters. Um, the people you hang around, the content you consume, like, are you watching like crying TV all night and like tons of fictional stuff and it's like stressful and sad? Like, why are you doing that to yourself? Like be intentional about what you consume. Does this bring me up or does it bring me down? Right? Am I choosing to just be like triggered or taking on some emotional ride? Or am I choosing things that bring me into myself, that bring me into peace, that make my life better? And people, do not be afraid to have boundaries. No one is entitled to you. No one's entitled to your energy. <laughs> so if they're becoming a toxic person in your life, I kind of hate that word, but you know what I'm saying? If they're becoming a person that's just like 
causing you to like just be in this emotionally turmoil place. Get out of that. Um, I would say um, also another thing is like decision fatigue. Do you not have any sort of set schedule in your life of things that bring you peace and calm? Oh yeah, music. Sorry, I just saw that one. Totally. Music. I, I say music is one of the most powerful nootropics there is, right? Like we take these nootropics to like focus and change our mood and all this stuff. Music is a powerful, powerful nootropic. It is an instant mood changer. You listen to a sad song, you're sad. You listen to a happy song, you're happy. Yeah, so don't, yeah, don't forget the power of, and I love that word, intentional music. Be intentional with it. Yep, from the, from the rhythm, where that brings you to the words. Um, mood boosters, trying to think what else. Light. If you, like, uh, I've been reading a lot about seasonal affective disorder lately, and there's like, it's a spectrum. Yeah, reggae is my jam. I just got done listening to some, just turned off. The movement and revolution and stick figure and I freaking love reggae because it puts you in a very chill mood and it also has words that fill your soul. I'm obsessed. Here comes here comes Kyle, my son. I'm picking him up. He's he's a quiet one. He'll <laughs> he won't mind. Um, sorry guys, hang on. No worries. Thank you so much. Okay, my <laughs> sorry. Um, so. Anyway, that's pretty, I guess that's pretty much it. Light. Yeah, sorry. Light. Seasonal affective disorder. So, um, Kyle, say hi to the, the gram. <laughs> um, so, getting some sort of light. There's light boxes on Amazon you can get. They're like 60 bucks. You can put it in front of you when you do your work or something like that. But getting some light in your eyes, that blue light sets your circadian rhythm and also has an impact on serotonin, I've learned recently, which is really fascinating. Um, so yeah, if you're not getting light, you might want to get something like that. They also have like red lights, you know, the juve lights or there's other brands now where they have red light. They have some that go blue and red. So you can do blue lights intentionally in the morning to wake you up and get you going. If it's dark until seven o'clock where you live and you're leaving at five o'clock in the morning. Right? So light is huge as well. Oh, last thing is food. Do not underestimate the power of how much food impacts your mood. So make a push. You don't have to get in this crazy restrictive mindset and I can't have anything. It's just, no, like make a push for nutrients, make a push for quality. What can I eat that sounds yummy that also is going to leave my brain firing and feeling awesome and keep my mood up. So, all right, that's all my mood boosters. Thank you for joining me. Hope you guys have a great, what day is it, Kyle? Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Great something. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.